Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Of course, it's your girl Erin. We got Suki with us today, so it's gonna be a pretty good video. Suki, no! <laughs> today we're gonna try something new and we're gonna be discussing all things yarn swift and yarn winders. Now, if you guys are new to the fiber art world, then you've probably never heard of a yarn swift or a yarn winder. And likewise, if you've been crocheting or knitting for several years and you wanna just get a little bit more information, this is gonna be the video for you. Now, we're gonna be breaking down this video into a few different segments. So if you just wanna skip ahead, There'll be chapters automatically listed down below. Now, a yarn swift is a tool that is primarily used by crocheters and knitters or pretty much any type of fiber artist that helps to hold your hanks in place as you wind them into cakes or balls of yarn. Now, when you purchase yarn, it can either come in a hank like this where it's all twisted up or it can also come in the form of a skein. But when you guys are crocheting and knitting with it straight from the hank, it could be extremely difficult to work with. And oftentimes it's gonna cause a lot of knots, a lot of just a big spaghetti mess and we don't wanna do that. We wanna crochet effortlessly and smoothly and we also wanna save a little bit of our time. So that's why we like to wind them into cakes of yarn. For example, if you guys have ever been crocheting straight from a skein of yarn that you purchased at Joann's or Michael's and you're pulling on the yarn as you're crocheting, you'll notice that it's gonna tumble, it's gonna flip flop about and oftentimes it'll just fall right off of your bed, off of your desk. That's where we bring in the yarn swift. I already know I'm gonna get people asking me, is it possible to crochet or knit directly from a hank of yarn? In my opinion, it's almost near impossible. There is a technique where you can unravel this, place it around your legs and then simply crochet and it will slowly unwind around your legs. But I'll be honest, I've tried this method before and instantly it resulted in a bunch of knots, yarn falling off my legs, not to mention like a little bit of a balancing juggling act that you used to do. It's kind of like an exercise for your body. So the cake, cake winding is just ultimate and we need it in our lives. Let's go ahead and do a quick little run through of the basic components of a yarn swift. So this is the one that I've been using for about two years now. This is by Knit Picks. It's a birch wood. She's gorgeous, I love her. The main function of the Yarn Swift is the umbrella component right here. And as we get to work, you'll notice that it does rotate in either direction. At the base of your Swift, there is also a clamp, which is used to physically clamp onto any flat surface like a desk or a countertop. And it's really easy, just kind of twist and tighten it up. And when you're all done, you can release it the other way. And then lastly, we also have the umbrella clamp, which is right here. And this is going to allow us to slide the knob up, <laughs> up like this and down. So we can choose the resting circumference of the hank as we're winding it up. And because hanks are spun at different circumferences, just kind of based on the brand or the process, having that ability to choose how wide or how small you want that circumference is really gonna come in handy. So it can pretty much wind up any size hank of yarn. Yarn swifts are also used in conjunction with a yarn winder, which kind of looks something like this. Now the basic components are also really, really easy. I'm also using the brand Knit Picks for my yarn winder. And honestly, I love this thing. First up, you will have the yarn handle or like the little turning knob right here. And as you'll see, it's gonna rotate in this really funky kind of off kilter direction, which allows the cake to be wound really evenly as you're going. Next up, you're also gonna have this little clamp down here at the bottom, which again, you can clamp onto a flat surface like a countertop or a desk. And then lastly, you do have this really interesting little aspect right here, which is kind of like the arm. And what we're gonna do is string the yarn from the hank through this metal arm right here. And this is going to guide the yarn onto the rotating ball section right here. So now that we've kind of walked through the basics of it, let's go ahead and show you guys the in-depth walkthrough. First up, you're going to want to grab your hank of yarn. This is usually what a twisted hank looks like. And if you guys are wondering, this is some of my own hand-dyed yarn. So if you guys want to shop, check around my little website. I'll leave the link for this down below. Now what we're going to do is take our hank and we're going to unravel it just like so. So as you unravel, you'll notice that it's kind of just one big gigantic circle. And what we want to do is place this hank of yarn around the umbrella. You should also note that your hank will have several little ties that are placed just kind of throughout the hank of yarn. And these are simply just to hold all the yarn in place so that it doesn't become a big mumble jumble. So now let's go ahead and set up the Swift. I'm going to start off by taking the little clamp at the very base of the umbrella. 
And we're just going to secure this onto our surface. Next up, I do wanna make sure that I loosen up the umbrella knob so that it's nice and loose and it can just kind of freeform slide up with just one hand. Now we wanna go back and grab our hank and make sure that we have it nice and open just like this. And I'm going to slide this over and around the center of the umbrella. So notice how nothing is touching the top part. It's just simply going to rest right here at the center of the umbrella. And what I wanna do is make sure that I'm still holding on to my hank with the other hand and give it a little bit of tension over here so I can just kind of free float it like so. I'm gonna grab the base of the umbrella clamp and then slowly but surely, we're going to slide it up and adjust it to where it fits the yarn just so. And at this point, you can go ahead and lock and tighten your Swift so that she's all locked in and ready to go. And as you'll notice, she's going to rotate like I talked about earlier. Before we move on, I do want you guys to make sure that you are giving your hank enough tension onto the umbrella. If you choose to leave your umbrella a little bit looser like this, notice how the hank is kind of falling off. There's not a lot of tension. Ultimately, as you do start to wind this into a cake and your Swift is going faster and faster, a lot of these strands can drop off of the edge and you're gonna get a huge spaghetti mess. So you do wanna make sure that you bring it up as high as you can so that it's nice and tight and nothing's gonna go anywhere. Now, in order to get a strand of yarn onto our yarn winder, what we need to do is cut off all of these little individual ties. A lot of times companies will add on these like little nylon strips and again, it just helps to hold all of the yarn together as it's being dyed, but we need to individually cut all of these little strands off. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by finding the little bit of a nylon strand right here, and I'm gonna cut the very center, and now I can just very gently wiggle and bring that little strand off. So we're just going to repeat this for the whole entire skein, excuse me, Hank. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate the umbrella, find another little loose strand, find the center and go ahead, cut it and gently, <laughs> gently pull that little strand off. And now as we come up here to the very last strand that I have, you'll notice that there are a bunch of strands going on here. And typically that is because the start and the end of the actual hank is tied onto the knot. So what I'm gonna do is leave the little knot alone. Again, I'm gonna find the portion where it is wrapped around the hank and cut that. And as I start to loosen this up and bring all of those ends through, here you'll notice the start and the end to the actual hank. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut this off so that the knot is no longer attached to our hank. And again, you'll see that you have two separate ends. So what I like to do is just pick the end that is resting the most easiest or the most obvious on the top of the hank. Back here, you'll see that this end is kind of tucked under the backside. So I'm just gonna go ahead wrap this up and kind of hide it underneath the hank. That way this end isn't flying around all loosey-goosey. And now we can go ahead and take this open end and attach it to the yarn winder. And now that my yarn winder is already set up and clamped onto the table, we're gonna start off here with the little metal arm that I showed you guys earlier. What I'm gonna do is take this strand of yarn and I'm going to wrap it under and over two full times so that your yarn should be going directly through that loop right there. And there's no extra tension, it's just kind of free floating. So I'll show that to you guys one more time. I'm gonna grab the yarn, wrap it under and over, under and over. And now it should kind of free float through that opening. You'll notice two little slits or openings, and this is where I want to slide my yarn across and just kind of wiggle it directly into those openings so that it has a little bit of security. And this is going to start the center pull of the cake. So now at this point, I'm gonna leave a little bit of a tail hanging off right here. And to begin winding, I'm going to hold onto that tail to give it a little bit of tension. Turn the little handle, and then you'll notice that it begins to wind up very slowly onto the little rod. So as you get going, you can kind of pick up a little bit of pace, but the trick is you don't wanna to go too fast because depending on the type of fiber that you're using, it can cause the cake to fly off of the winder, which I'll be honest, has happened to me several times. So I just like to find a nice little rhythm 
And because I'm using a super wash fiber, I know that I can pick up a good amount of speed with this. But again, if you're using like a cotton or a silk, those are typically the fibers that I found that don't stay on the winder the faster that you wind. And as I come up here to the very end of my hank, I'm gonna keep some tension with my fingers or my hand. And now at this point that I've reached the end, all I'm gonna do is just kind of wrap it around my cake. I'm just gonna find like little spots like right here to just slip it through and hold the tail of the yarn. And in order to get the cake off of the winder, what I'm gonna do is grab the little tail that is strung through the very top. I'm just gonna loosen this up and pull on it until the little tail finds its way out and normally when you guys purchase a hank of yarn you're going to get like a little cardboard reader with all the information about the yarn so i just like to use that little tag to weave through the tail of my yarn i'm just going to wrap this up nice and tight into a circle wrap the ends of the tail as tight as i can get it to go and i'm going to place this directly at the top of the cone and then we can go ahead and glide the cake off of the winder, just like that. This is kind of like the basic process. Now let's go ahead and move into one of the last bit of categories, which is kind of like my review, my overview, and my suggestions. You can use a yarn swift without using a yarn winder if you guys aren't looking to spend the extra money. What you would do is pretty much go about it the same exact process. You'll string up your hank onto your yarn swift, and then from there you can just use your hands and begin to kind of wrap it manually. But again, that's gonna take a lot of time. Your tension might not be the same, so in the end, I would still highly suggest that you pick up not only the Swift, but also the Winder, just because it makes it a little bit more gorgeous, keeps it a little bit cleaner. Doing it manually, not really my forte. <laughs> now, if you're also trying to wind up your skeins into cakes, this is also possible, but you're not gonna be able to use the Yarn Swift. Obviously, you can't really string up a skein onto the Swift, so all you'd wanna do is find an end on your skein, wrap it around the metal rod on your winder, and then just begin turning that bad boy. And what you're gonna have to do is just let that skein of yarn kind of flip flop about on the floor. What you could also do, and what I like to do, is just use a plastic bag to put the skein of yarn in. That way, as I'm winding it, it doesn't flop around too much. It kind of stays contained in that yarn bag. And at the same time, it's gonna keep your, your yarn nice and clean because pet hair, dander, y'all get the vibes, y'all know what I'm talking about. The Yarn Swift is also a really great option if you guys are into rug tufting or you guys are actually like rug tufters. I like to use the Yarn Swift to wind up my skeins into cakes of yarn because as I've learned, when I'm tufting straight from a skein, it kind of causes a lot of tension issues and a lot of times as I'm tufting, if the skein is flip flopping and it gets caught and there's a lot of tension, it'll actually pull out of the tufting gun itself. So as a little beginner tufter like myself, I've learned that tufting with cakes of yarn is a lot smoother and a lot easier than just going straight from the skein itself. So you don't just have to be a crocheter or a knitter to use the yarn swift. You can be a fiber artist of any kind. It just really helps and streamlines the whole creating process. And then for our very last chapter here, we're gonna go over where you can purchase your own yarn swift and yarn winder. Personally, I've been using the brand Knit Picks for both my swift and my winder. I genuinely love this brand. They produce such high quality products. This is not sponsored by the way, so y'all know that it's for real. As I mentioned earlier also, this is a birch wood material and I've chosen to go with wood just because it's more long lasting, a little bit more durable. Let me tell you guys, I've put this thing through the ringer. I've used it so many times, kind of banged it around a little bit. I've put it in storage, out of storage. So it's gone through the test of time and it's kind of proven itself. So I would highly suggest picking up, it doesn't have to be Knit Picks itself, but any type of wooden, wooden swift and then a really nice plastic winder. Now there are options online. Instead of using a wooden swift, you can use metal or plastic swifts. Of course, these are gonna be a little bit cheaper, a little bit more budget friendly. I've read a ton of reviews online in the past about plastic and metal swifts. And unfortunately people have said that they do break down these little like, umbrella parts right here tend to kind of break and fall apart and get all warped and bent out of shape. Spend the little bit of extra money to go with something more high quality. 
and then that way you don't have to replace it after a year. It's just gonna last you hopefully a lifetime. I'm gonna leave a link down below for the package that I got, but it came with the Swift, the winder, and also like a little yarn ball. And ultimately I ended up saving about $20 instead of purchasing them separately. And really quickly here, before we close out today's video, I just wanna thank the video sponsor, Squarespace. And in case you guys didn't know, Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for you to build your online presence and showcase your business. With Squarespace, you can sell physical, digital, or even service products with an online store. You can also fully customize your homepage with photos or videos, along with featured sections for quick access to your favorite products. One of my favorite features is their shipping option where you can pick and choose which locations you plan to ship to, and you can even set your own shipping costs. If you're interested in creating your own website, you can head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash it's Airbnb. And you can also use my code it's Airbnb to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring. Let's close out the video. I hope you guys really enjoyed this little change in content. I'm gonna try to bring a little bit more informative content for you all and just help to share the little bit of knowledge that I have onto you guys and we're going to go ahead and wrap up the video. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye! <laughs> Suki's spoken.